So say we have a web server and whenever a client connects to it, we fork a new thread to handle that particular request. Right? Now, which means if we have n concurrent requests being handled, we would have at least n threads running to handle n request. Now this looks awesome because we see every request getting its own thread, which means it can execute as fast as possible while having that separation of concern. This looks awesome, but what if n shoots up? What if we get a really very large number of requests coming in? What happens when we have extremely large number of threads? This is where things would start to falter. Now, few things that when we have large number of threads, each thread would be requiring its own stack, which requires memory. So the memory consumption would float up. Because there are a large number of threads, the operating system would have to do a lot of context switching between them. So that overhead kicks. Right? Plus it would overwhelm the hardware when we are getting large number of threads to process those many requests. This could lead to your machine hanging, your machine crashing. I've seen a bunch of these issues in production. Now, this naive way of doing like whenever I get a request, I spin up a new thread to handle every single time is catastrophic, which is where we need to cap the maximum number of requests that, or oh sorry, the maximum number of threads that we would create. We can still handle more requests than that, but we would need to cap the maximum number of threads that we would be creating. Now, this is where thread pulls kick in. Some real world use cases for this are, let's say when a web server wants to handle multiple requests concurrently, thread pull kicks in. That's a very straightforward example. Second is where you are doing a lot of asynchronous processing. Let's say you consume messages from a broker and you want to process it. Ideally, you should be capping the number of threads that would be processing those requests. And this way, you know you are utilizing your hardware to its fullest while not overwhelming it. That's what. Now, what exactly is a thread pool? So thread pool is basically a collection of worker threads or these are threads that you create, that you pre-create. And whenever someone wants a thread to execute something asynchronously, instead of spinning up a new thread, you pick this thread from this pool, you use it, you delegate a task to it. Once it is done, you add the thread back to the pool, which is where you can use a pretty standard concurrent blocking queue to implement this. But the core idea being that you save the cost of spinning up a new thread every time. Basically, you are pre-creating the thread. So which means whenever you want, you get, you use, you put back. If the queue is empty and you are trying to pull a thread out of it, which means that's where you would be blocking. So this caps the maximum number of threads that you would want to create by the length of the queue that you have. And that is pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. And it basically caps it to the hardware that you have, ensuring that your hardware doesn't overwhelm. Now, this is where, if I take example of the web server that we were discussing, what would happen is whenever a client connects to the web server, instead of spinning up a new thread, we go to this thread pool, ask for a thread, handle the request. Once we done sending the response, we add the thread back to the thread pool. This is how the capping would happen. This ensures, most important thing is, it ensures stable performance of your system. That no matter how many requests comes in, you are capping your maximum number of threads that you can handle as per the configuration of your hardware. But again, it has a side effect that what if you can handle 100 concurrent requests or you have the thread pool of size, let's say 100, you cannot handle more than 100 requests at a time. What would happen to the other requests that are coming in? They would have to wait. So smaller the thread pools so the tuning of thread pools is really important and it totally depends on the hardware that you have the work that you are doing and whatnot but understand this that when you are implementing it with a blocking queue if the queue is empty which means there is no thread pool to handle the request the request the incoming request would need to wait and you should be okay with that okay now what should be the size of the thread pool it is difficult Whenever there is something which is tunable, it is really difficult to tune it. If you are having too small of a thread pool size, which means you are not utilizing your hardware to the fullest, your task would queue up and the progress would be slow. But if it is too large, then your hardware overwhelms unnecessarily. You can do a lazy eviction, you can do a lazy termination of threads and all to do it, but you should not be having very large thread pool size or very small. So it totally depends on the, on the use case that you have, the work that you are doing, and the underlying hardware configuration. Now, how do you tune the thread pools? A couple of parameters that you can leverage are number one, the number of processors available that you have. 
on your machine let's say 2 core 4 core 8 core 16 core 128 core machine whatever you have that is one of the factors more importantly the kind of work that you are doing for each thread if it's a cpu bound workload memory bound network bound so if it is network bound then you can spin up relatively larger threads uh, to handle and if it's very high cpu bound then because or if each each request uh, that you are delegating to a thread consumes a lot of time on the cpu then you would need to have a fewer threads and whatnot so there are lot of characteristic lot of factors that you need to consider before you tune it but the best way to do this is start with a start with a sensible configuration and then keep iterating over different parameters and see when you can get the max so it's almost looks like it almost looks like you are doing a trial and error basis but that works but again over time you would be making very mature guesses about the thread pull size right okay now enough of the theory now that you know how thread pulls like what thread pulls are and the problems they solve let's go into the code to understand how they are implemented so here i have a very quick prototype written in golang i'll just give you a very quick walkthrough and i would highly 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 encourage you to implement it right not dot and you can pick your own favorite language i picked golang because i prefer golang over a lot of languages so i picked up that but if you are picking up C, the implementation would vary slightly here and there. Using Java, you can use concurrent blocking queue and whatnot. But let me give you a very quick walkthrough of what thread pulls really are. Right. Now, if we start from the main function, what I'm doing is I'm creating a pool of five. Now, I'm implementing pool from scratch. Right. So I'm defining a pool of length five, which means at max it would have five threads that I'm creating. Now, I'm just mimicking a task, a job in which I'm just waiting for a, I'm just sleeping for a second and then I'm just printing job completed, right? And I'm adding pool dot add job. Right? Now, what am I doing is when I do this add job, it basically adds the job, the function that needs to be executed in a work queue. Now, this work queue that you have is basically a simple Golang channel. Think of it as a blocking queue. It's a Golang channel in which the core idea is that this particular goal, this particular thread pool that I have in which I'm adding those many go routines basically threads i'm spinning up so whenever i'm getting the task the task is being added to the channel and i have my worker threads basically let's say my pool size was five so i'm spinning up five go routines which are continuously listening on this channel and whenever we have a task in this channel one of them is picking them up and executing so one of them is picking them up and executing that's the whole plan dead simple implementation in golang now this way what happens is we don't directly trigger the job to run so we are just calling add job to this on adding we add it to the work queue we have a bunch of workers consuming from that iterating over the work queue and picking those jobs up and executing and now if i run this let's say i have i'm setting up my thread pool size to two now if i run this go run main.go you can see that i would be getting two printf after one. So because it is picking up two jobs at a time and executing and because I've added delay of one second. So that's why they are getting printed almost at the same time. Right? Okay. Now if I change it to five, you can see that although I'm submitting 30 tasks, it will pick five at a time and complete. So other tasks are waiting to be scheduled or to be sent to this worker pool for execution. Right? And this is how you implement thread pools in Go. And again, it's a very primitive implementation. But depending on the language of your choice, C, C++, Java, whichever you are picking, I would highly recommend you to implement it with respect to constructs that are available in that language. Uh, if you are using C, the core concept is go for a go for a bounded blocking queue, which is uh, which is thread set, right? And go ahead and implement, right? And this is pretty simple to implement, but it just teaches you so much about concurrent programming. So yeah. This is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. This entire source code is in the description down below. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.